من المنتجبين المنتخبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على وصي مصطفى عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم أب الحسنين مولى القونين إمام الثقلين يأسو بالدين سيد المتقين رأس المحسنين سلطان الأولياء أمير المؤمنين أول المسلمين أسد الله الغالب غالب كل غالب مظهر العجائب علي بن أبي طالب الحمد لله الذي لا يحتك حجابه ولا يغلق بابه ولا يرد صائله ولا يخيب آمله أما بعد فيقول الله في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل لا أسألكم عليه أجرا إلا المودة في القربى Brothers, sisters, respected elders, scholars, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aristotle has said that each and every human being is a social animal. And in being a social animal, you find one of the greatest driving forces on an emotional level of a human being is that of love. And indeed tonight we are here to discuss the concept or the ideology or the thought or some people would say the mirage that is love. And love within itself is something very interesting because if you go towards Google and you find that what is the most searched word or most searched emotion on the search engine and you'll find that is love. So you find that each and every human being seeks this love. Whether that is an orphan who seeks the love and shelter of a guardian, or it is a wife who seeks the love of a husband, or it is a mother who seeks the love of its child, or indeed the father, or indeed it is the human being who seeks the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you find that love within itself has many dimensions. That these are some of the dimensions that I mentioned of love. And love within itself has many levels. And that's what we're here to discuss tonight. But one potent question before you go into the discussion of what is love. Is our understanding of love. And how this understanding has formulated within our very existence. That many of us, when we ask the question, what is love? We won't be descri describing love. We'll be desc describing lust. And unfortunately, unfortunately, in our communities today, our conception of love is formulated, not by, for example, philosophical works, but rather the music industry, the media industry, and indeed the movie industry. There are many people, when you ask them what is love, they'll, for example, quote you a line from, I don't know, Sleeping Beauty or Aladdin, for example, within the Disney. Or, for example, they quote, for example, some musician. That you find that they'll quote certain movies or certain musicians rather than quoting, for example, philosophers. Or quoting, for example, those individuals who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understood love. And that is why Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullah wa salamu alayhi oh. 
He says very beautifully that I sat at the gate of my heart and did not allow anyone to enter except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then you would ask, Amir al muminin but didn't you let, for example, your sons enter this heart? Didn't you let, let for example, Rasulullah enter this heart? Didn't you let, for example, your wife, Lady Fatima, enter this heart? Amir al muminin probably turned around and reply, says, yes, I did. But those individuals contributed to me loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I found blessings with them because they were the blessing of Allah towards me. <clears throat> and that is the beauty of this, whole, this, this religion and the people that we follow. Because we realize that at the time then there was music. At the time then there was for example individuals. For example, there were shows, live shows. You find that those individuals realize that the only being that is worthy of my love is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why our third Imam also said, do not sell your soul cheaply. Why? Because your soul is worth nothing less than paradise. And that is why many of us, we have sold our souls cheaply. That we have gone out and we have focused on the most basic love. That is the love of the opposite gender, for example. Or love for, object, for objects, for materialistic things. And we have focused so much on this that we have, foc we have forgot about the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That conquers everything. And indeed, when you have true love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will give you everything that you want. But go through his barga, go through his, for example, podium, go through his mosque, go through his being and the way he's told us to pray towards him. Because if you knock at the door enough, someone will open the door. And that is the beauty of this love that we are talking about. Because the true love that we need to understand is the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I would like to look at the concept a bit, bit more holistically so that we can get a grasp for all the sorts of loves that we have within our life today. And that's why when we discuss the concept of love, I would like to discuss it in a sequential fashion. But the first point I would like to mention here tonight is the title of the lecture, which is point number one, what is love? What is, for example, impersonal love? interpersonal love and what role does for example erotomania paraphilia and indeed lust have within these and also what is muwadda as in how can we explain muwadda like from the holy quran says in chapter 42 verse 23 it mentions the word muwadda what is the difference between muwadda and all these other forms of love that i've mentioned point number two what is the greatest love story between two human beings within the holy quran Point number three, what is the love of the mother towards the child? Point number four, what is the love of the father towards the child? And how can we illustrate both of these loves? And point number five, how did Ali Muhammad show love towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was unmatched on the 10th of Muharram? And by looking at these, hopefully we'll understand love in a more holistic concept rather than something in a narrow framework. So you find that point number one, what is love? Love, for example, has many dimensions. One of the dimensions of love is impersonal love. Love for, for example, objects. Love that is one way. For example, I could come forward and say to you here today that I have a specific car and that car is, for example, I don't know, a Lamborghini. Yes, we all love the Lamborghini here tonight, inshallah. If you don't, then research what it is. You'll love it after you've seen it. So you find that the Lamborghini is something that some of us love. That love that we have for that car is impersonal love. We can love the car, but the car will never love us. Never love us. That love is not existent. It's not a two-way thing. So you find that this is a one-way sort of street. Things that we love, for example, we love a painting. We love, for example, a chair. We love a book. We have certain love for certain things that is one directional. And likewise, another one directional love 
is for example Rotomania. So what do I mean by Rotomania? What I mean by Rotomania is that sort of love that is delusional. So for example, some people you know, that they obsess over celebrities, isn't it true? They're obsessed, as in they'll dress like them, walk like them, talk like them, they'll for example move like them, all they do, what are you doing on the internet? Yeah, well, I'm researching this personality. Now that's all he does in his whole life. He wants to emanate that person in every single way. He wants to imitate that person in every single aspect of his life. The way he walks, the way he talks, the way he dresses, his haircut. Well, now some people will even, you know, change their religion for the guy. He's Christian, I'll have to become Christian as well. You find that this sort of thing is called erotomania, that you have a delusion, you are obsessive about a person, but he's never even seen you, as in, when you probably go meet him, he probably just brushes you to the side, look at this, look at this madman, as in, what's wrong with this guy? Or indeed girl. So you find that this is one form of love. Another form of love is what? Interpersonal love. Interpersonal love is love between two human beings, or love between humans. I have, for example, a certain inclination. I have a love towards the orphan, and I want to help the orphan. I have a love towards the poor people. I have a certain love between me and my mother, that my mother loves me and I love my mother. Or, for example, me and my father. And you find that this is another form of love that we have that is an interpersonal level. So many people ask the question, I said, Muhammad, when you come forward and say, that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى That Allah's Prophet is told in the Qur'an, say, قُلْ That I do not want any recompense from the people, from anyone except the love of my family. I do not want any recompense from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people, nothing, I don't need it. I just want love for my family. MashaAllah, what love did they give them? All of them are slaughtered, one after the other. MashaAllah, what a great ummah we have. Anyway, that's besides the point. But you find that this is the love that, for example, the people have shown towards Ali Muhammad. And even to the extent that those people who have attacked Ali Muhammad, they've loved them and then they say, we love Ali Muhammad as well. I, said, I don't know what sort of logic people follow. But anyway, that's a whole different discussion. Let's not get into that. You find that this is a form of love, Mawadda. And I remember a scholar, I asked him, I said, I said, Mawlana, you know, what does it mean, Mawadda? So he sat down, he opened a book up. He said, Mawadda, this is the definition. I said, I understand that definition and the translation is love. Okay, I understand that and it's a great feeling. I know what it means. But explain to me what real Mawadda is. Real Mawadda. He says, you want to know? I says, I want to know. He says to me, he says, do you know the fish? I said, which fish? He says, the fish that swims in the sea. Not any specific fish, Muhammad. I said, okay, yes, yes, the fish in the sea. Tell me about the fish. He says, the fish has the greatest of love. I, said, I didn't even know the fish has a mind, does it? Does it think? He just, I thought it just goes around and blows bubbles all day. He says, no, no. He says, the, the, the fish has love. He says, okay, explain to me the love of the fish. He says, the fish is in water. He says, do you know the relationship between the fish and the water? I says, yes, I know that without the water, the fish would probably, it dies. He said, it doesn't just die. So what do you mean? He said, does it, when the fish is separated from the water, does it begin to gasp for breath? I says, yes. He said, does it begin to jump around that it wants to go back into the water? I says, yes. He says, what relationship does it have with, I said it's a symbiotic relationship in a sense that that's so close the relationship. He says, because does the fish's love for the water just end when it dies? I says, I don't know. He says, no. He says, when you eat the fish, you as the human being, you eat the fish by grilling it, frying it. However you make the fish, you eat the fish. When you eat this fish, what happens when you eat the fish? You begin to get thirsty. He says, so even after death, the love of the fish does not diminish for the water. That even when it becomes a part of the body of another being, the water 
is still a part of the essence and love of the fish. I said, what do you mean? What are you trying to say to me? He says, this is Muwadda. I said, what do you mean, Mawlana? He says, this is Muwadda. He says, Muwadda should be like the fish and the water for us and Ali Muhammad. I said, what do you mean? He says, you and Ali Muhammad, when you are separated from Ali Muhammad, you should begin to gasp for breath like you have no life left. And even after your death, when you're buried six feet in the ground, if even there comes a time where people pick up the clay and the mud of your grave, all they should be able to hear from your grave and the soil that was put on your grave is Ya Ali, Ya Ali, Ya Ali. <laughs> so you find that this is what the scholars say, that if you want to know true Muwadda, then this is true Muwadda. That you and when you are separated from Ali Muhammad, then it is as if your lifeline has disconnected from your body. But what love do we show Ali Muhammad? Yes, that this is the scholars, this is what they say, this is the love we should have. Right? This is the love we should have. And you find when food is not served in the mosque, you find 70% of the jama'ah turns another blind eye. Yes? It doesn't matter who's speaking. Wallah, it doesn't matter. Because it's not about what the guy is saying. No, Wallah, you know, a person could come on this member and just, you know, not even be able to string a sentence together. But because he's mentioned the name of Ali Muhammad, we should be patient with him. Isn't it true? That even if we don't want to come, we will sacrifice for Ali Muhammad our time because we recognize that they're worthy of our sacrifice. If we truly understood Muwadda, but we haven't understood Muwadda. We've listened to a thousand majalis, but we haven't understood what Muwadda really is. And I speak to myself before I speak to any of you guys, that we have not understood true Muwadda. We haven't understood love. We don't even know what love is towards our wives. And our wives don't even know what love is towards our husbands. And that's why it brings me to my second point. That many of us, when we read our books and our novels, when you mention love stories, straight away in people's heads will come probably Romeo and Juliet. Straight away, Romeo and Juliet. It won't come, for example, in the Quranic story. No, no. It will be, for example, Romeo and Juliet. Do you know Muhammad? Romeo and Juliet, they committed suicide for one another. So Allah, if they committed suicide, then they're both going to hell because Islamic principle is number one, suicide equals hell. Yes? So they've gone down the drain anyway. There's no point in having that sort of love, right? So you find that the Quran says what? The Quran mentions a story of love between two human beings. The story of Prophet Yusuf and Zulaikha. Now Wallah, I tell you even till this day, that if you want to know a person who had such love for another human being that you have to look at and you cannot put to the side the example of Zulaikha. Zulaikha, as each and every one of you know, Zulaikha was a woman who was the queen of Egypt. That she had everything in her life. She had the money, the gold, the celebrity status, the love of the people. But she found that the beauty of Yusuf السلام, was unmatched. Yes, that I see some people raising the eyebrows. MashaAllah, some of you are, MashaAllah, you are beautiful, but the beauty of Prophet Yusuf is unmatched, I tell you. Yes, that you guys are beautiful, but the beauty of Yusuf is some, it's on another plane. So you find that Yusuf السلام, was a very beautiful human being, and Zulaikha fell in love with Yusuf. Till the extent that she wanted to sin with Yusuf, and all the people, all the women of that area began to accuse her. Accuse her. She said, you were going to accuse me? No problem. That's fine. She invites everyone. She gives fruit and a knife into the hands of all the ladies. She tells Yusuf to come in. The beauty of Yusuf is so beaut beautiful. That it doesn't matter how much you exfoliate and for example, wear your foundation as men. And for example, you may pluck your eyebrows and thread your face. 
and make sure your bed is on point as it were. You find it doesn't make a difference. That no one's going to cut their hand at looking at you. I'll tell you that much. You know, if you think that's going to happen, then brothers and sisters, more towards the brothers, you need to speak to me after this lecture because you do need counseling. So you find that Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam what? He came into the room. The women began to cut their hand. He left. Then after he left, they realized that they cut their hands. Zulaika said, you accused me? What about your hand? Then they threw the knives on the floor, blood gushing forth. And she said that, listen, my love for Yusuf is a pure love. How did she show that? Many of us here tonight, we lust over the opposite gender. We do, we lust. Zulaika's love was so true. Do you know what she used to say? When Yusuf used to walk past, she became blind. At an elderly age, she became blind. When Yusuf used to walk past, she used to say, I can smell the fragrance of my Yusuf. Wallah, we all wish to have wives like this. That you find, what does she say? I smell the fragrance of my Yusuf. As she became, she was the most beautiful of that area. As she became older, she lost her teeth. She became blind. Her face became wrinkled. But brothers and sisters, all she, say, all she could say and utter from her lips was Yusuf, Yusuf, Yusuf. And one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her love. And it highlights for you, if you have true love for something, Allah will give it to you. It may take years upon years. It may to be towards the end of your life. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for your patience. أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْتَوْنَ أَجْرَهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنِ بِمَا صبر. That He will reward you for your patience. How did He reward Zulaikha's love? He returned sight to Zulaikha. He, he gave youth back to Zulaikha and instructed his prophet to marry Zulaikha. That's true love. Not some soppy story of suicide. True love is this. Where you've waited years upon years. When someone walks past you, you smell the fragrance. That is true love. Between two human beings. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us love like this. That will be a love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes even rewards for this sort of love. And indeed, another beautiful love is the love of our mothers. Isn't it true? The love of our mothers. That she fed you through the fruit of our heart. She placed you in a place where no one will ever be able to place you. She would, for example, sit in the sun while she puts you in the shade. She will feed you whilst she goes hungry. Wallah, our mothers. May Allah bless our mothers. And she would stay naked as long as you were clothed. Yes, this is our mothers. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that each and every one of our mothers who has passed away, we pray that they have a long, we pray that they have a high position within paradise. And those, for example, mothers, brothers and sisters, that are alive today, please recognize their positions. Do not shout at your mothers. Because they done things for you that you will never be able to do. And that's why someone asked our fourth imam, they said, I have taken my mother on Hajj on my back and I have done tawaf of her. And I took her on my back to Muzdalifa and Mina and everywhere. Has my debt been repaid towards my mother? The Imam replies, he says, not even a drop of the debt has been paid. And indeed I want to highlight the love of a mother by, by giving you a beautiful story. What's this story? He says there was this young, young man. This young man 
He used to go to school and one day his mother came to school. And when his mother came to school, his mother only had one eye. When she came to school, the children began to laugh at his mother. And the following day, the children began to tease the boy. Till the point where he said, oh mother, I hate you. For me, you are nothing but a disgusting cyclops. Wallah, you know, we have children today. May Allah give them some akal. We have children today that speak like this towards their mother. He would be abusive towards the mother, he would be rude towards the mother. But the mother would stay quiet and still clean his clothing, put food on the table for him, do everything for her child. As this child became older, he went out to university, he got a job, got married, had children, and never came back towards his mother. Once he went out for university, he lost all touch with his mother. But a mother's love is such that she'll find you, no matter what area of the world you are. Although this child was so disgusting and despicable towards his mother, his mother found him. And she went towards the child. When she went towards the child, she knocked on the door of her child. The children of her child opened the door and began to shout and scream and cry and say that there's a witch at the door. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yes? There's a witch at the door. The mother begins to cry. The child comes to the door and says, Oh, you disgusting old hag, why have you come here to scare my children? Be away with you, be away with you. So the mother did not say anything and walked away, went away. And when this mother went away, you find that one day the child received a letter for a reunion for the old school that he used to go to. So he told his missus that he's going on a business trip and went towards the reunion. So when he went towards this reunion, what happened was that he went and he relaxed there for a bit and he went towards his mother's house. He says, it's been a long time since I've seen my mother. <clears throat> he was looking at the old shack. He went to knock at the door. The door did not open. He went towards the neighbor's house, knocked on the door. He says, where's my mother? They say, your mother has passed away. Your mother has passed away. He says, fair enough. He didn't cry. He didn't care. But they said, she's left a letter for you. Left a letter for you. He opens the letter. When he opens this letter, I tell you, when, you, when, when I read you this letter, it's going to send shivers down your spine. I tell you honestly. He opens the letter and he begins to read the letter. She says, dear son, I am so happy to hear that you are coming back to our city. And indeed it has brought me great pleasure, but I do not believe that I will be able to meet you. For I have become very ill these days. And I fear that my death is close, that is why I am writing this letter for you. Throughout my life, you continuously abused me and you were rude to me, but something I have not told you and I want to tell you today. He says to his, he reads the letter and he begins to cry at the words that come forward. Why does he cry? The mother writes in the letter, he says, she says, when you were younger, you were in a car crash. And in this car crash, you lost one of your eyes. Do you know where I'm going? You lost one of your eyes. The eye that you have, one of them, is my eye. And I never told you this because I never wanted you to be grateful towards me. But that one eye that you have is my eye so that you could see the world through my eye. So although I am dying, I still see the world through your eye. That is the love of the mother. She will sacrifice anything for her son. And indeed, that was not the only time where her eye was sacrificed for the love of the child. You find in the Holy Quran, the story of Prophet Yaqub and Yusuf. 
when Yusuf was apparently killed by his brothers, which he wasn't, and thrown into the well and the children came back to the father and said, Oh father, we have, ki we have left Yusuf for his body was mangled by wolves and this is the evidence. Prophet Yaqub began to cry. He bent, began to cry to such a degree where he lost his eyesight for his child. If you want to know the love of the father, then this is the love of the father. And if it's not the love of the father, but then this is what we need to aspire towards. Those of us who are fathers today, this is what we need to aspire towards. Many of us, we do not show any affection towards our children. We are stern-hearted. Rasulullah commands us that we should say, I love you to our children, to hug our children, to spend time with our children. For all the money in the world will not be able to replace the love of the child. Many of us, what do we say? I did not get this and I did not get that because I did not have money. I tell you, the child will not care about a dime if you do not give him any love because you'll not have that connection with him. Give him love and he'll be content with whatever he gets. And that's why you find that the love is the strongest emotion within this religion. Strongest emotion. And if we truly love Ali Muhammad, we truly love Abba Abdullah, then we will come towards the mosque of Ali Muhammad, whether it is raining, whether it is shining, wallah, even if there's a tidal wave, but if there's a majlis of Abba Abdullah, the true lovers will come. That's the truth. You want to know reality? That's the reality. Because that's what it means to be a true lover of Ali Muhammad. We will sacrifice everything in the way of Ali Muhammad. And indeed, they showed us on the 10th of Muharram what true love is. They showed us. That even if I'm thirsty for three days, three days, and I do not get any food, I am fighting the way of Allah. And my love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than anything else. That even if I have to sacrifice the six-month-old baby and cover my bed with the blood of the six-month-old child, then so be it for my love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater. Even if I have to see a spear enter the shabi of Rasulullah in the form of Ali Akbar, then I will remove the spear from his chest for my love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater. That even if I have to give my head on the 10th of Muharram, then so be it for the love of Ali Muhammad, for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater. Even if I have to give the parda of the daughters of Ali Muhammad, then so be it for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater. That brothers and sisters, I tell you the 10th of Muharram was a day. A day where the true lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came forward. They came forward and they gave and they gave even when they didn't have anything left, they still gave. And that is why it brings a tear to the eye. Why? Because Lady Zainab gave that which no human being gave towards the love of Ali Muhammad. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That to the point, brothers and sisters, when Lady Zainab was going towards Sham, some of the scholars and poets narrate towards that a man came towards Ali Muhammad when they were going towards Sham. They were in. 
شکو زوی زید ابن معاویه They were crying for the dead ones and they were taking strikes to the faces through the soldiers of Banu Umayyah But a man came to the lady Zainab and when she came to when he came to the lady Zainab she began to say do you know that I am the daughter of Shir Khuda Amir al-Mu'mini When the hooded man came towards Lady Zainab, he removed his veil from his face and he said, I am your father, Amir al-Mu'mineen. Lady Zainab begins to cry and goes towards the feet of Amir al-Mu'mineen and begins to complain to Amir al-Mu'mineen. She says, Father, have you come now? The six-month-old baby died of thirst. His thirst was quenched with the blood of his self. Oh, Father, have you come now? When Sakina's clothes were burnt and the earrings were pulled from her. Oh, Father, have you come now? Have you come now that we are in shackles and it is the burning heat of Arabia? Oh, Father, have you come now that when we ask for water, they mix wine in the water so we cannot drink? Oh, Father, where were you when Abba Abdullah's body was being trampled by the horses? Oh, Father, where were you when Abbas's arms were cut off? Where were you when the arrow entered his eye? Oh, Father, where were you when they used arrows and spears to remove our veins? No, no, no. السلام عليكم يا أهل البيت. Brothers and sisters, ask you to raise your hands for dua. We pray to Allah سبحانه وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور. اللهم أغني كل فقير. اللهم أشفي كل جائع. اللهم أكفي كل عريان. اللهم أقضي دين كل مدين. اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب. اللهم رد كل قريب. اللهم فك كل أسير. اللهم أصلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم أشف كل مريض اللهم صد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اللهم اقض عنا الدين واغننا من الفقر إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم